Thank you so much for joining us today, Ambassador Young. It's wonderful to see you. And we're so thankful to have you here with us on Peace One Day 2023. Um, could you tell us about your life and career to this day? Let's see. I, uh, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I think that uh, I had a perfect childhood uh, for today's world. I was born in the middle of a block, and an Irish grocery store was on one corner, an Italian bar on another corner. The headquarters of the Nazi party was on the third corner, and a Chevrolet dealership around the fourth corner. So I was right in the middle of all of the confusion. I was born in 1932, uh, which is uh, just about the time that Hitler was stirring in Germany. And uh, the Nazi party was was pretty belligerent, uh, but peaceful in New Orleans. But I had to grow up facing all of the differences of the world. My father was a dentist. Uh, and uh, in New Orleans, that meant most of the dental supply people happened to be Jewish. Uh, and... Um, I come from a fairly mixed up family that uh, I had nothing to say about, but I'm happy uh, that uh, I had big family on both sides. My mother's family uh, was five children that uh, my grandmother had, and um, she raised 11, <laughs> but only five of them were hers. My father uh, was a family of four. Uh, and uh, one, he was the only boy. Uh, my grandfather on my father's side uh, was something of a financial organizer, and I don't know, he, he wasn't rich, but he organized uh, health insurance and burial societies for a number of organizations. So he had... Uh, control of a significant amount of wealth. Uh, that wealth was uh, basically used to secure uh, whatever education we wanted or needed. Uh, but um, it was basically a working class neighborhood. Ask about your career. And um I My career, that, I tell you what, that, that led me into a career. Um, really, I started out in the ministry. Uh, how I got all together, sure. Uh, my mother was a very religious woman. My father went to church all the time. I come from a religious background. Uh, and... Um, so I, 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 I went through school with my father wanting me to be a dentist and knowing that I didn't want to do anything that would keep me shut up in an office. <laughs> uh, but I ended, up, um, I ended up pastoring a little country church, several country churches in small towns across the South, Marion, Alabama, Thomasville and Beechton, Georgia, uh, and um, that's where I met my wife and a little country girl, but she had gone to a church of the Brethren and Quaker school, so she had a background that was pretty much trained in nonviolence, and one of the first uh, conflicts we had was in my church. Uh, we we ran into, I was asked to lead a voter registration drive. And uh, the day before the voter registration drive, we saw, uh, well, it looked like a mob, but it was actually just a couple of hundred Klansmen, uh, Ku Klux Klan. They were in their sheets and... Uh, Normally, they meant violence for black people. Uh, I asked her to sit in the right, in the window of our house, uh, which was a little shack that we were renovating. 
and I would go down and talk to the people if they came to bother us. Uh, she said she couldn't point a gun at a human being. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, uh, you don't have to shoot him. You just have to make him think that you shoot him if he bothers me. And she said, yes, but uh, I will never point. You have to remember that under that sheet is the heart of a child of God. And I said, yeah, but right now that heart is not particularly beating in my direction. <laughs> He's trying to keep me from running a voter registration drive. And uh, <clears throat> that ended up as an argument with her uh, telling me that I should find another way because she would not point a gun at a human being. Uh, and uh, so and I had a pacifist family. Yeah. <laughs> and advocating for peace. We, we, we ended up settling it by my just picking up the phone and calling the mayor. And the mayor um, agreed with me that we should have a right to have a voter registration drive, but that the Klan had a right to have a meeting, but he would keep that meeting on the courthouse steps and it wouldn't interfere with our voter registration drive. So in a way, we negotiated a peace. Um, but it was in the face of the possible death of my three-month-old baby and me and my wife. Uh, but it never seemed to bother her. Uh, and when I said they could come here and one stick of dynamite would kill us all, her answer was, so? I said, so? She said, yes. Don't you preach about the cross and the resurrection? And um, I said, damn, woman. <laughs> but uh, she was serious. And it made me realize that whatever you do in life, there's always the possibility of death, but you should never let the fear of death interfere with anything you think you ought to do. It's a beautiful way to, to say things as well, because it takes away the fear and and then hopefully we can lead with what our purpose is and I know that one of the, your purposes over the years has been to bring people together rather than to to pull them apart and peace day uh 21st of September today is a moment for people to come together um for peace and sustainability and um, what do these moments of standing together mean to you and why are they important? Because I know you've done that many times in your lifetime and through your career and to today, standing and advocating for people to come together in a peaceful way and a peaceful manner. Well, it's because of the way I was born, that neighborhood in which I was born, that uh, I was constantly running into people who disagreed with me in a society that was legally segregated, where I was uh, deemed to be inferior. And my father said, uh, you don't have to feel like you are inferior. All men are created in the image of God and women too. <laughs> and um, you have an understanding of God creating of one blood all the nations of the earth. And if the Nazis don't understand that, um, that's their problem with God. You don't have to settle that problem. Well, it turned out that maybe that wasn't quite true, but it was tr true in my childhood. But I found that uh, the clash with the authoritarian personality uh, is probably the difficulty of um, the world in which we live. And that authoritarian personality can express itself in many ways. Uh, but um, the answer is always reconciliation. And that really can't be done unless it's somehow done face to face. 
I, I think that's such a, a beautiful thing to say as well, because I think so much can be handled with good communication and when people come together. And sometimes that's one of the greatest obstacles for humans to overcome. Um, with what's happening in the world around the protection of resources and each other, um, we're seemingly sort of spiraling out of control in some degree. Where do you draw your hope from that with all that you've seen and done, that you can see that we can get past this again and get to a place of, of much more peaceful living? Well, I think that uh, my hope uh, probably comes from uh, my family's biblical background. And the fact that I have been associated with the Christian church, and but more specifically with um, the love of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is a forgiving love. It is a redemptive love. Uh, it's an understanding love. And um, that's as important in dealing with my children <laughs> as it is dealing with my enemies. In fact, sometimes I have more children, more problem with my children than I do with my enemies because I don't expect my children to be rebellious. And they are, and they have been. But with four children, nine grandchildren, and one great-grandchild, I am constantly defending um, what I feel to be uh, peace on earth and goodwill toward men, women, and children. <laughs> <laughs> it so often starts at home, and it sounds like with a busy home that you have, it it starts there, and then we can take that to others. And um, with that, what is one of the most important lessons that you've learned in your lifetime that you still hold on to today? Well, I think that... Uh, my father's mantra was, don't get mad, get smart. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you lose your temper in a fight, and life is a fight, life is a struggle, but it doesn't have to be a violent struggle. And when you lose your temper, you cut off your mind, and you're left to your fist and your feet. Mm -hmm. And he said... You're never going to be big enough to beat everybody or fast, uh, fast enough to outrun everybody. But if you stay calm and you set, remain control in control of yourself, then you will find that your mind will get you through difficulties that your fists and your feet could never handle. That's a wonderful testament to keep a hold of. And I think it's so important today and calm being one of those words that resonates with every single one of us. If we can find calm in any scenario, whether that be at home with many kids and grandkids and great grandkids, or whether it's in a in a place of, of violence or up, uproar or unrest. So, but you know, I think that um, the diversity of my neighborhood the diversity of opinions uh, and lifestyles in my family, that learning to live with others who are different is both a challenge, but it's almost always a blessing when you understand the world from another person's point of view. I love that. And on that note, thank you so much, Ambassador Andrew Young. It's such a pleasure to have you with us, to see you again and uh, to share um, in this, uh, this day of peace. So thank you. Thank you very much.